Welcome, welcome, welcome to Learning Reaper. I'm your host, X dot, E dot, L dot, O. And today, I'm actually gonna go over some articulation tools that you can actually use inside of Reaper. I wanna give you a little backstory first. I remember when I was first trying to learn how to use Reaper, there was some articulation plugins that I wanted to use to kind of get some different things in there, like say a string and I want like a staccato underneath it. Instead of making a whole nother track, I can just use the articulation and kind of, you know, change them up as I go along. I started off looking at re-articulate and I was like, this part right here is what made me not go for it. So let's have a look at the articulation bank that I created for the French horns. We select the track and then we press the pen icon on the UI window. You can choose to show it in Explorer, open in default app or edit in Notepad. All right, so this is what a rebank file looks like. And I know it might look overwhelming and a bit scary, but trust me, it's actually not that complicated. Let me walk you through it. So the first row, we have G stands for group, and that's just a group. Uh, in this case, it's East West Symphonic Orchestra, but it can be Spitfire or whatever VST library that you are using. The N then stands for the name of the patch. So in this case, it's Six French Horn Master. Then with M, you can just specify a custom message that's going to be displayed by the track configuration, but that's just optional. Then we have bank followed by two numbers. And really the only thing you have to remember here is that the first number has to be lower than 64 because anything from 64 and upwards is reserved for factory banks. And the second number is just between 0 and 127 and you should be fine here as well. Also keep in mind that there cannot be two identical bank numbers within one rebank file. Yes, I don't want to program stuff. Um, I don't like scripting. I probably never have. I don't know why I'm using Reaper then. <laughs> but um, I did find another one that's a little bit better. It was something that I did use in when I was in FL Studio and I didn't know that he actually made one for Reaper. And I'm gonna give a big shout out to Blake Robertson for making the BRSO for Reaper. So let's go and get into it and show you how to get it and how to set it up. Uh, it is a beta form, so it's not complete really. Uh, and I don't think he's ever going to complete it unfortunately, but it does work in Reaper and let me show you how. All right, so here's the site. Uh, this is a Blake Robertson site and this is the BRSO Articulate for Reaper. So basically when you come to this site, the link will be below in the description so you guys can download it. Um, it's a free beta. Uh, basically he has an installer for Windows and he has a zip archive. I'm not 100% sure if it works for Mac. I have not tried it on a Mac. I don't own a Mac. So Mac users, if you want to try it, you probably download the zip archive and just use the e EL file inside there and then see if that'll work for you inside of Reaper. But uh, for everybody else that has the installer for Windows, it'll automatically do it. He even tells you how to do it for the zip archive and you basically put it inside that Reaper folder and it'll pull up inside of Reaper. He also goes over some instructions of how to use it. He has a video on this site. Um, this is what it kind of looks like. And you have like different colors for different uh, articulations that you use, which is really, really cool. It's a pretty easy setup with this uh, MIDI channels to UACC. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but it does work. <laughs> and that's pretty much the bottom line of what you want to look for. So um, he even goes over instructions of how to actually look for it, going through your action list and using like the ELL, all that stuff in here. Um, so let's get into the plugin and kind of see what it does. All right, so here we are in Reaper and this theme is the Reaper tips theme that I'm using here. Uh, so usually what you want to do when you first download it, you want to go to your options and you want to go to show Reaper resource path and Explorer finder, right? And it'll bring you basically to your Reaper configuration file. I would suggest if you're on Windows to kind of have this folder over here on the side, as you see, I have mine over here for Reaper. So um, it's an easier way to get to the shortcuts and just make sure you download the stuff. You can put it in like the user plugins. As you see, I put it in here the BRSO articulate. So I know exactly where it is. I put it in my user plugins 
and when I'm actually looking for it, I can find it inside of Reaper. So I'm gonna close this out. And uh, if you go to your actions, go to show action list. All right, so if you're actually first doing it, you wanna go to new action, right? And you wanna go to load a script. So um, I know I have mine set inside of scripts. So I'm gonna go to scripts up here. So you just hit on this rearticulate EEL file and you hit open and then you'll be able to open it up inside of the actions list. So if I type in BRSO, I have the articulation ELL right here inside of Reaper now. And I can run this. Um, you can even add it as a tool item. So uh, I actually have my setup as a tool, so I'm gonna close this out. So if I go right down here to this left-hand corner, I have it right here as a tool, a customized tool. So if I click on it, it'll open up down here at the bottom, but I wanna move it. So I'm gonna grab right here where it has the articulation. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna drag it over here on top of my meters. So now I have the articulation over here. And as you see, there's nothing in it. It has no track selected uh, and that's perfectly fine. So what I wanna do is start with an actual instrument. So let's use the BBC Symphony. I think that's probably the easiest one. All right, and this is what it looks like. So um, I'm gonna make like a little five bar loop here and I'll pull up the piano roll so you guys can kind of see it inside the piano roll. And as you see, it has four different changes for articulation for this VST. So basically we have it down here in the piano roll and we can search for whatever the key switch is. So I'm kind of move this up, kind of stretch this out. And we're gonna start from the bottom and see which actually triggers the, the switch here from long to staccato. So it's all the way down here to negative one. So if you go to named notes, as you see, this is note zero. Let me make them a little bigger so you guys can see. All right, so this is long note, spiccato, pizzicato, tremolo. Right, so we know which keys they are to trigger it. So now we need to just set it up inside of the Spitfire Audio BBC Symphony, right? So in order to do that, you can click on your effects and just add an effect in here and you wanna search MIDI channel. All right, so basically MIDI channel to key switch. This is the one we're gonna look for, this MIDI channel to key switch. So we're gonna add this to the track and now you have this MIDI to channel setup. So this is how you would set up the keys for this symphony orchestra over here, right? So this would be zero, right? And to name it or whichever it is, you can go here and go long generic because we know that's gonna be long. We know the next one is gonna be sp spiccato, which is kind of like a short string. So we can look for a short string short generic, right? And we can name this one, right? And what will be the next one? Short pup, pluck pizzicato, you can find that one. And that would be two. And then you know a tremolo one, let's see. I'm gonna use this legato tremolo. Right, and we can just name this one three. So now we have them all set up as key switches on here, on this side. And just to make sure this works, make sure this is the first thing inside of your chain. So if you go over here to your like effects, right? Just make sure that this MIDI channel to key switch is actually first and then your sounds come after it. Because if you don't do it that way, you won't be able to use the articulations correctly. All right, so close these out. So we're gonna be using the violin strings and let's start. So I'm gonna go back to where it's a regular piano and I'm probably gonna shrink this down. It's super huge right now. <laughs> let's see. So we're on the long ones, right? So let's say we just did, let's do all the C, right? One bar. And now let's do some 
staccato, some short ones. Let's put a key snap on for C major, that's fine. Right, and uh, let's do some plucks. And then let's do some uh, tremolos. All right, so now we have a little articulation set up in here. I don't have to do it through the MIDI. All the colors are coordinated with these sounds over here. Uh, what I would do if you set one of these up is go up to your MIDI channel, open that up, and you wanna hit this little plus sign and you save the preset. So you can save the preset inside of Reaper really easy this way. So next time you come in here and you want to use these same instruments, you'll be able to have them already set up for your BRSO, right? So I'm going to close this out and let's hear how it sounds. Right? So now you have a really cool way to kind of change or add things in here using your articulation. So let's say I wanted to change these, right? Or change, you know, a couple of these in here. You have to choose more than one in order to do this. I'm not sure if it was just something that he designed it to be that way, but if I just do one and I try to change it to like a, another key, it's not gonna change. But if I do like more than one, if I do like two of them and I hit on this, it'll change those keys to those other notes, right? I say we do right click, grab these right here, and let's make them short. So now all of them are staccato notes. Right, and this gives you a lot of freedom to kind of make different things. So I can, I can click on this one, right? So now the next note I put is gonna be this same exact note, which is really cool. So I can put a couple of them here, right? So it does give you the option to kind of layer those notes as well, which is really, really cool. I think this is definitely something that you want to use if you are doing orchestral stuff and you do a lot of key switching and things like that. This is a lot easier to me than the re-articulate one that they have out there where you have to actually write in the scripts to kind of make it do these things. And then you got to use like your CC lanes in order to do it. I think this is kind of easier to do with this layout. So basically all you're doing is adding the MIDI channel and you're adding the actual tool here uh, on the side and you're ready to go. I think that makes it a lot easier and a lot more effective and efficient when you're actually using articulations in Reaper. And with that being said, I hope you guys really, really, really enjoyed this video. Um, I enjoyed doing this one and showing you guys a couple of things that I've actually been learning uh, in Reaper as well. Uh, if you guys have already been using this and you still use it, let me know below in the comment section. If you never use it before, let me know in the comment section. Um, I do have the link to this BRSO inside the description of the video, so you can definitely go and download that. Uh, if you have like any questions or concerns, definitely leave them below in the comment section. And make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel. And with that being said, that's it. Until the next time, I really appreciate you guys for watching Learning Reaper. Peace. Hey you, yes you. YouTube wants you to watch this video next, man. Go ahead and click it. I'll wait. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing, I'm not gonna keep waiting here. All right, 
I will see you in the next video though. Peace.